The Central Bank of Nigeria on the 21st of January 2022 released guidelines for the newly introduced electronic invoicing, that's e-invoicing, an evaluator for exporters and importers in the country. According to the Apex Bank, the new regulation is primarily aimed at achieving accurate value from imports and export items in and out of Nigeria, as the electronic process will replace the hard copy and the invoice authenticated by the authorized dealer banks. Since the announcement of the policy, the CBN has been under severe knocks and criticisms as there has been calls from different quarters urging the CBN to either rescind the uh, policy or extend its implementation timeline. However, for some industry players, the development will enable the Apex Bank to effectively deploy technology to manage the country's resources, while others are of the view that if the implementation of the CBN guideline is allowed, it will bring about duplication, uh, lengthy and uh, cumbersome procedures in the nation's import and export system, especially for those who are not experts on valuation, imports and export procedures. Let's understand this better, uh, see what this policy stands for. I have joining me live via Zoom. He's a professor of economics uh, as well as the past president of the Chartered uh, Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, CIBN. He is Professor Shego Ajibola. Prof, good afternoon to you, sir. Hello. The moderator. <laughs> Prof, I know already you've heard my introduction, but let me ask you very straight. What is your reaction to this move again by the central bank? E-invoicing to ensure valuation and actual actuality of imports and exports. How does it come to you? It's to be clear to everybody that the direction the global environment is going towards is that of electronic transactions. So everything is now being digitalized. We are moving from the era of old to, in fact, a paperless environment. So it shouldn't be surprising to anybody that every regulatory institution, be it in the banking profession, be it in the academics, and so on and so forth, is looking towards how to re-engineer, how to redefine the processing of transactions. So here we are with banking. The regulator is saying the time is now to look at electronic way of conducting export import transactions between Nigeria and the rest of the world. I don't see anything that is extraordinary in that. That is the direction the world is going. Hmm. Prof, uh, you're a professor of economics at uh, Babcock University, uh, Inogo State. Now, I am, I am looking at the technical part of the, uh, uh, let me put it this way, the technical part of it. Now, an agency has come out to say that this is against the law, citing this. I I'm going to ask you, that is a contravention of the Customs and Excise Management uh, Act. SEMA, that if the CBN comes up with something like this, it will cause more problems for importers and exporters. Are you thinking along that line too? Or you, I'm also thinking on the other side, or uh, is this just to help um, address issues also around forex management? Well, you know, the, the challenge we usually have is the way and manner we come out with some of these policy dimensions. You know, there are paradigms. Some of these paradigms have been entrenched in our system for decades, several decades. So sudden shifts will create definitely this kind of apprehension. Uh, for, for the start, if there are enabling laws about how to conduct certain transactions, have we consulted those laws with a view to changing them, if custom and excise departments, for example, is saying that the processing will be cumbersome, what level of training, of consulting, have we created to bring about understanding among importers, exporters, and other interested parties or stakeholders in export business? 
if we have not done this, you know, I talk about the concept. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing that is wrong with the concept, but we must come out, come out clear. We must create a process that will not throw anybody into panic, that will not disorient what we have, what we are, we are already used to. There must be seamless transition from the old to the new. If we fail to do this, of course, there will be this kind of reactions. And it may also create some dis major disconnect between us and the rest of the world. So those who are the stakeholders who are apprehensive, they are apprehensive because maybe little or no understanding of this new process is on ground. Maybe the time lag between when the policy was rolled out and the implementation. You know, we keep talking about this and we've talked about several policy changes that came abruptly with all the implications, even on this, on, this, on, on this platform before. So what time dimension have we given to enable a clear understanding of the new process? If we have not done this, my own advice would be, we should create an environment where everybody that is involved in this business of first party understand clearly. Because here, so many things are involved. International relations are involved. Foreign exchange management is in fault. The local economy is deeply in fault. Human beings are in fault. So everybody must be carried along. There must be clear understanding. And I doubt if two weeks will be enough to achieve that before we can have a seamless transition from the old to the new. Seamless transition, Prof, seems, uh, sounds very good. But I'm thinking also that infrastructure is something that should also be put in place when we have new policies like this. I kind of agree with you sometimes that the way we go about, right. uh -huh, the way we go about uh, in, in letting Nigerians know about some of these policies, I don't think they go about it the way you should. Consulting the stakeholders, bringing the key players together, letting them understand what this is uh, aimed to achieve and all of that. I think that is also key for the Central Bank of Nigeria. But... Uh, when we are to start, it's supposed to be uh, implemented from the 1st of February. And at the moment, we don't already have a pathway. We don't have a channel. We don't know how this will work. So I won't blame the likes of Nasima and other agencies that are already saying, do you, do you think we, uh, what are we doing? Are we not supposed to put, all, put everything in place before coming out with pronouncements like this one? Okay, maybe let me have a fair understanding of the, of the mindset of regulators in any industry. When new policies are coming out, especially policies that deal with very fragile items, very fragile segments of the economy, there's always the fear that if too long a time is given, that new policy can be, can be sabotaged. If, for example, government wants to change currency through the central bank, which has uh, the traditional responsibility for doing that, if you allow a time lag, there will be a problem. Certain other major critical changes in certain sectors of the economy, if you give time, people will devise ways of sabotaging, of sabotaging that kind of policy. But this is not one of them. I don't see any problem of anybody attempting to sabotage here. So if enough time is given to achieve all that we have said, training, counseling, and creating understanding of the chain, even why and the how, providing the infrastructures, the instruments, the facilities required, bringing every stakeholder into confidence and agree how the process should go. We've talked about Nasima, we've talked about SCCI, we've talked about uh, uh, the um, Manufacturers Association, man. We are, we, we are countless number of exporters, importers, all over, some of them, not too uh, lettered, that need to be taken along to, for clear understanding. Even if you have 
your agents, even if you have your bankers that could handle these transactions, if the mindset is not taken to confidence, if the mindset is not converted, if the confidence is not created in those that are involved, the exporters, the importers, there could be a crisis of confidence. And that will not be good for a major shift like this. So you are right, moderator, by saying that we need that time. We need to create that understanding among all stakeholders before this critical change. Like I said, this is not a situation where anybody could go ahead the regulator to create a way of sabotaging it. There's nothing to sabotage here. It's a process. Not that money is, uh, is, uh, is, is involved immediately. Not that any money, any movement of money is at stake. Not that there is any danger to any of the segments, any of the stakeholders. So enough time could be given without anybody losing anything out of that. Facilities should be provided. Infrastructure should be in place. Even the understanding between us and those who import to us and those who, I mean, those who export to us and those who import from us, the understanding, all this we need. And like I said, I am not too sure if two weeks will have been sufficient to create that understanding. Maybe that is why the apprehension is there. Maybe that is why the full takeoff of, of it is not yet in place. But like I said, do not forget, this is a proper, a, 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 the proper thing to do. This is, is a step that we need like yesterday. This is a shift in paradigm that we cannot afford. Well, there is e-commerce today. As we are talking about uh, e-banking, we are talking about uh, electronic everything. So as we are now as a country, that is the direction we should be moving. Then we should move mm -hmm. along that direction mm -hmm. in a most seamless pattern that will not create apprehension among stakeholders. Great stuff uh, there from you, Prof. Prof, let's also quickly touch on this topic as we're already running out of time. It's always interesting having Prof help us shed light on these topics. Federal government targets 1.2 trillion naira uh, from telco operators. And they've also approved revenue collection solutions for them. Uh, this, uh, I think uh, there's this aggressive moves for funding from government, all angles. We see non-oil, we see taxation. Now, from the telcos. How do you react to this? <laughs> Nigeria needs every cover. <laughs> Look at the size of our budget. <laughs> Look at every portion that is, uh, the, the, the portion that is uh, deficit budgeting. This is going to seven trillion uh, naira. So I I believe this is time that tax evasion should there should be zero tolerance yeah. for any form of tax evasion. If for tax avoidance should be done, should be done uh, in the most diligent manner without compromising operating governance rules here and there. So if 1.2 trillion is part of revenue that, go, that is due to government by virtue of enabling laws, rules and regulations, I don't see anything that is wrong in that. You know, the problem we have as a country, and not only Nigeria, trans so many transactions, so many transactions have been digitalized. And the laws you are referring to, not all of them emphasize what we have in the global environment today. So as we are struggling to be ourselves with the dynamics of the moment, we should also, the National Assembly should help to look at those laws with a view to changing them as fast as possible so that we don't run foul of the provisions of our own law. Otherwise, somebody can successfully make claim against the government. So, I repeat, if 1.2 trillion is a figure that is legally due from tech, and I'm sure tech cooperators themselves will be delighted to be part of the growth and development process of our environment by virtue of their contribution to the, rep to, 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 to the revenue post to the pool of revenue coming to government. But in doing that, we must not assault our laws. We must not put the operators in very difficult uh, situations whereby they will be forced to cry for help, either locally or internationally. So things must be done properly. Hmm. Properly is the word there from Prof. Uh, Prof, uh, let me thank you uh, so much 
for your time on the show today. That's much uh, time can take for at least making sense of these two very important uh, topics. Thank you so much. Professor uh, Shegun Ajibola, there is the past president of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, also a professor of economics at Bakpok University, Ogun State. Thank you for your time on the show, Prof. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much. All right, I uh, appreciate do, I, you. do I enjoy your weekend?